Hi, this is John with SysEng Quick. Today I'm going to show you how to install CentOS 7 using Pixie Boot. We're also going to set up a local NFS repository so that we don't need internet access at all for the installation. To install using Pixie, we're going to need a DHCP and TFTP server. We'll also need a Pixie bootloader and a CentOS installer. I have already downloaded the CentOS 7 DVD ISO and placed it in the media ISO directory on my Debian machine. You can get the ISO from CentOS.org slash download. The first step is going to be to install DNS Mask, which is our TFTP and DHCP server, NFS Kernel Server, which is our NFS4 server, and Pixie Linux, which has the files we need to bootstrap the CentOS installer. We're also going to make sure the firewall allows DHCP, DNS, and TFTP traffic. DHCP is UDP port 67, TFTP is UDP port 69, and DNS is port 53 on both UDP and TCP. For the NFS server, we're also going to have to add some rules for that traffic as well. For NFS 4, we really only need TCP's TCP ports 111 and 2049, but I've added rules to allow NFS 3 traffic as well. We'll edit the configuration files to ensure these ports are static in a moment. Normally, these ports are random, which doesn't work so well with firewalls. Now we're going to go ahead and mount the CentOS 7 ISO so that we can copy the installer file. So let's go ahead and make that directory. We'll go ahead and loop back mount the ISO. We're going to make a directory for the CentOS 7 for NFS. And we're going to make a directory for the Pixie Linux configuration and the CentOS 7 Linux installer. All right, so next we're going to copy the Pixie bootloader to our TFTP directory. So Pixie Linux.0 is the bootloader and the rest are just helpers to make the menu look pretty. We've also copied over the CentOS 7 installer. That was from the CentOS disk, the initial RAM disk, and the kernel. The load Linux will load that kernel, initial RAM disk, to boot up in our CentOS installer. Now we'll go ahead and set up the boot menu for the Pixie bootloader. We're going to use two options. The first will install from our local NFS share, and the second will use a regular CentOS mirror. Now we need to configure DNS mask, so we'll go edit the configuration file for that. We're going to have it listen on the LAN interface, and we're going to use bind interfaces to make sure it's only listening on the LAN interface. We've got a DHCP range of about 50 IPs in my network. You need to change that to whatever your network is. We've got the DHCP boot, which will help it do Pixie booting with pxelinux.0 and the server is going to be 172.16.1.1, which is the IP or the internal IP of this machine. We are enabling the TFTP server and setting the root to be serve TFTP. NFS traffic can use TCP wrappers to filter requests, so we want to make sure that that traffic is allowed. I generally block all traffic for TCP wrappers for security, but we're going to need to make sure we allow specific traffic to come through that we actually want. So the first thing we'll do is make sure that all loopback traffic is allowed. We never want to block any traffic on the loopback interface. We'll then make sure the SHD traffic is allowed and then we're allowing all the RPC services for NFS to be allowed from the local subnet. Next we'll configure the static port definitions for NFS 3. So we'll edit the NFS common and we're going to add some stuff right here. We're going to need to, yes, we'll want to use ID map because that's for NFS 4. And we're going to add our static port definitions right in here. So we're using ports 32765 through 32768 for our ports. So STATD has a couple of ports. We also need to edit the RPC mount D port. And finally, the LockD port, which is loaded in a kernel module. So we'll go ahead and set options for that. Next, we need to edit the FS tab. 
uh, NFS4 uses bind mounts to do its shares. If you don't bind mount things under the NFS4 root, it gets confused and weird things happen. So you want to make sure you always do that. So we're going to make sure that we mount the DVD image into the media ISO set to S7 like we did already, but we want to do that on boot. And then we'll bind mount that into the serve NFS CentOS 7 directory, and that will be how NFS can share the files from that DVD so we can install without a network. The final step is to configure the NFS exports. For NFS 4, we need to set up a root folder and add our bind mounts under that. We're sharing serve NFS CentOS 7 with anyone on our local subnet, and it's going to be read only. Now it would have always been read only because we've got it mounted to a CD image, but this just makes sure that it's read only here. Running export fs-ar will update our NFS exports and that takes care of everything we need to do. All we're going to do now is reboot to make sure all the changes we did took, takes effect. And when that comes back up, we will see if we can install CentOS. All right, it got DHCP, and here we are. We can choose the install CentOS 7 from a local NFS share or from the MIR repository on CentOS.org. Let's go ahead and choose the first image and see if it boots up to the installer. There we go, CentOS 7 star loads up, and we can now install CentOS, and we won't need network at all to do that, so you can see that the installation source is going to be the NFS server, and we're set to go. Thanks for watching, see you next time.